we have created this uh, wet tolerant uh, rocket heater. It's an eight inch rocket heater um, built out of uh, fire brick and insulated fire brick. Uh, the J tube comes up into here. We've actually insulated, uh, unlike normal rocket heaters, we've insulated the uh, barrel around the heat riser so that we can keep more of the heat from just radiating out into the atmosphere. Uh, we want it to come down into here. So we've insulated our, uh, our uh, barrels and the, uh, the eight inch rocket um, heat riser comes up to about here. And then we have a space that's insulated with ceramic wool um, where the hottest exhaust comes up to and, uh, and then goes down into a tube to come inside of this, uh, this barrel. This is a Pringles can made out of six 50-gallon uh, drums, uh, all with the ends cut out, going all the way to the other end of this hugel culture. Um, and our exhaust tube comes out of here and sends the hot gases to the bottom of the far end, where they then have to rise up at evenly across the top so it's not scorching the roots of those plants we're trying to warm up. Uh, it's evenly heating this whole thing to the point where this is about a hundred degrees when you're sitting on it when it's fired up. So it's a comfortable place to sit and contemplate the universe while you're feeding it, which is, we found you have to give somebody a reason to actually feed something like this. So sitting where someplace warm uh, and, uh, and, and feeding it uh, is a nice uh, reason for being here and that exhaust uh, warms up the top of this Pringles can barrel uh, and then gradually sinks to the bottom and is pulled out through the exhaust tube and this, this exhaust is insulated and actually comes all the way from down here um, to, from the base of this, the inside of this Pringles can all the way up through our original bell up here that, uh, that's full of hot gases so, uh, and then up and out so we have this little spot heater that gives us a little boost in our exhaust because this can be very cold. This could be a big wet, a big frozen lump, a big ice cube that we're trying to melt and we don't want our exhaust to stay stuck down there. So we've got this little spot that we're heating inside of the exhaust coming up through the inside of the hottest spot to make a little bit of a hot spot in the exhaust that wants to rise and suck that cold uh, exhaust out of there uh, after we've Put all of the heat into our um, into our hugel culture. So uh, this is uh, designed to, to have very minimal areas that that, uh, that are that will complain if it gets wet. Um, very very little bit of cob there that we can cover with something when we're not sitting here. Um, but the rest of it is all weather tight, so I can sit here and water this thing. Or if I had a uh, had this in a greenhouse, I'd have this sunk into the ground, warming the the ground and charging that thermal battery to keep the place warm even when it gets cold outside of the greenhouse. And I might have like a gravel bench on the top of it uh, so that I can put the seedlings out and have their roots stay warm, have them be in the nicest, calm, uh, warmest spot in the greenhouse. And I can water them with a hose uh, without washing away my cob bench because there isn't a cob bench. But they can stay warm and that gravel uh, will help retain some of the warmth. So the idea is to create something that is wet tolerant, that'll heat a greenhouse. In my area, a lot of people have greenhouses. I live in Cleveland, Ohio, where it's very hard to keep things uh, growing through the winter because there's not much sun and, uh, uh, and it gets cold. So uh, a bunch of people went and got federal grants to get greenhouses and they got built these great hoop houses that they can't afford to heat because it's so darn expensive to heat these things. So uh, this is an idea of something that will help you extend that season and, uh, and maybe be a comfortable place to sit while you're doing it. So this is our firebox for our eight inch rocket. And it's just a basic eight inch rocket uh, with the um, P channel that, uh, that helps uh, keep this, uh, this really hot spot a little bit cooler so it doesn't crack the brick and also helps direct a secondary air intake to the top of the tunnel to mix in with all of that hot uh, burning gas to burn things more more clear, cleanly and completely. I suspect that we could keep this unfrozen and, uh, and that at plants that are cool hardy but need to not be frozen in their roots, 
could actually keep growing. I'd be curious to see what would what would want to grow here, uh, and what would be happy, and and and, and where it will be happy. Where is it going to grow here? Are we going to find some spots that are that seem to be um, protected from the wind and get a nice little warm spot, or are we going to see that the whole thing grows a green fuzz, uh, but not until March, uh, when everything else is still dead? What are we going to see? We're very curious to find out what we're going to see. If you like this sort of thing, come on out to the forums at permies.com, where we talk about rocket mass heaters, homesteading, and permaculture all the time. Mm -hmm.